presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Homosassa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFMN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Be impeccable with your word. Express your love. Impeccability of the word can be measured by a level of self-love. If you love yourself, you'll express that love in your interaction with others, and that action will produce a like reaction. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down nine, NASDAQ up 47, S&P's up 11 and a half, gold contract down $2.30, trading at 1774 an ounce. We have silver, down 24 cents, $19.60 an ounce. Light sweet crude up $2.40, $90.51 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. A 10 year note up three ticks, trading 118.27. The 30 year up five at 140.15. And King Dollar. King Dollar is trading up 835 ticks at 107.407. The euro is at one to one. Euro is at par, folks. You got the yen trading out here at a price point of 135 to 1 US dollar, and the pound is 119 to 1 US dollar. Excuse me, folks. Sorry about that. <laughs> Too many blueberries. Our phone number is 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the SPs, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, bottom line, you have uh, the spy up uh, buck 46. You're gonna do maybe 40 million shares. Well, guess what? We came downtown yesterday with 63 million. You're up with 40. That's a market that wants lower price, man. I suspect this, this gap is gonna be game. The gap we're talking about is 412.75. Now, the way I'm looking at this market is that that would be the normal place that you can come back to. That being said, what you have that could really scare the heck out of a lot of people would be if you came back a 50% retracement and a 50% retracement is where we took off from on the 27th of July. Uh, that would be just enough that like, oh no, man, here we go again. So we'll see how this shakes out. If we start backing down with high volume, then that opens up the date of the 27th of July. If we just back down and the volume's not big, then it will just fill that gap. That's in your SPY. We go into the NDX 100, we take a look at the NDX 100, same type of setup inside the NDX. We're gonna, you know, bottom line, you can see it didn't hit the, see, if, you, if we hit the low today, then that would have been saying that, hey man, you're going topside. Because what we've done is, is go up rather than test the low of yesterday. So the low of yesterday had 47 million shares traded. We're at 27 million now, so it'll do like 37 million. That also leaves that gap wide open, that gap being 319.03. Gold, gold contract out here. We take a look at the gold contract. What we have with the gold contract, uh, it's amazing, as I said in that update, that it's not smoked because the doll is up almost a full penny. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. So, so what you have is that gold right now, you know, it's trading lower. You got 116,000 contracts. That's still going against light of volume. Going against 157,000 contracts, you're going against 193,000. So that's telling me, bottom line, it still wants higher price. Now, it's gonna be really hard for gold, all these commodities to get to higher price. We'll go into oil for a second, to get to higher price when you see this dollar. Because what we have here is this. 
You take a look at the dollar, and you have a decisive break. Now, so check this out. Let me make this. This is like such a classic, it's unbelievable, actually. So here you go. Yeah, you had a decisive break of your channel line. And that decisive break was on the 30th, no, 16th, 16th of August, okay? Bottom line, what does it do? Jumps right back inside the channel line. And when you have that, that's considered a false break, folks, okay? When you get a false break, if you get a false break topside, you're gonna go downtown. You get a false break downtown, this is going uptown, man. This is going right after the 109 294. And uh, we'll see where the rest of this is going to shake out. But that's my take on it. The thing that's amazing out here today is that the market really is not paying attention to the strong dollar. That's, that's the reality. And we'll see uh, if, in fact, it does. Uh, what we do have, you have option, option expiration tomorrow. So this is a nice time that you, you will get some divergence. And I heard Dave uh, White talking about, you know, on the open. Uh, and that happens quite a bit, folks. Okay, uh, let's see. So is... I gotta look at that and see, because what does happen is that the, the cash S&P options expire on the open. And that's when you see, if you see one pushing one way, bottom line, that's all about the close of the options on the open, which is pretty cool, man. Once you kind of understand that uh, and watch it play out, don't just, you know, you can take what I'm saying, but take a look at it, don't trade off it, and, and you'll see how this works. And you wanna do that, you know, whether it's six months, seven months, a year, so you can really kind of get a feel of how that shakes out. Some of the high volume equities out here, let's go take a look at them because uh, what we have out here is you can have a low volume day. We have Bed Bath & Beyond that's getting smoked, uh, down five bucks, that's at 17.80. Uh, uh, Apple is flat. Apple's gonna be coming out with a huge amount of uh, new product, I guess, uh, the first week of September. Uh, you get AMC down a buck 74, we get uh, Cisco come out with numbers. That's a blast from the past. That's up 280 right now. Uh, in fact, let's go inside the NDX 100 and see what's holding it up because, you know, years ago, folks, it was what, Cisco, Dell, Sun Micro. Uh, there was one more. Oh, Microsoft. Those are the four kings. I mean, they, you know, they talk about trading. That, that was the four kings. Today, what do you have? You have Cisco up uh, 6%. You have Marvell Technology up 4%, you get Broadcom up 3.7, and you get Constellation Brands up 2.8. Uh, taken away from it. Now, these are big numbers taken away from it. This is, you know, this is really intriguing, actually. And what you have is this. You have Walgreens Boots down 6.5%, NetEase is off 5.8%, Moderna is off 5 and you get Baidu off 3 Those are big numbers on the other side on the way down, so... We'll see, you know, how this whole thing shakes out. Let's go uh, and take a look at Best Buy, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, rather. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, this is a meme stock, no doubt about that. Uh, bottom line, this thing yesterday gets, oh, well, first off, no, just let's go back three weeks. Three weeks ago, it's trading at 455. Goes all the way up to thirty dollars yesterday. Trading at seventeen seventy four. You got uh, one of the largest owners. He's gonna sell all the shares, make out like a bandit. And you know they gotta love that these meme stocks. They just, I mean, that's nothing compared to how much money was already made there. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow is up 23. NASDAQ is up 57. S&Ps are up 15. Let's go take a look at that S&P again because uh, this is a great question. And what the question was when I was going through where I think this can come back to is that why didn't I pick the 26th of July, which would have been the low with, with 39.10 versus the 27th? And it has to do with the 27th is a sign of strength. So here, let me put the, I'm going to put the spy up, actually, so we can have the volume with you. You'll see what I'm talking about. Markets love going back to signs of strength, folks. It's just, it's just how markets go. You can see, see the acceleration. See, the low, when we pull back, that was at 52 million. So that was basically testing the 71, rejected it, and then this was the sign of strength. We took the swing point out. It was, you can see that 82 million shares. You took the swing out of 72. That's number one. And then if you take this, this surprised me, actually. It, it shouldn't have, but it was pretty cool. And if you take the 50% retracement, look at this. The 50% retracement is 397.01, and that low there is, uh, well, the lowest, oh, this is cool to know. The low is 394. The high is 402, and the 50% mark is 397. So that's how, that's how I got that. I always use the signs of strength when you're kind of backing into it. That's, it's, it's a mind blower actually that they love going to those things. And what's so cool about it, if you set up before the fact, meaning that let's say you, you, you have something on your radar, you're digging it right, it takes off without you. Bottom line, you just put it you know, on your alarms that if it comes back to this price point, hit that alarm off, it remind you, a bottom line is that you're gonna be surprised how much time how many times they actually come back to that area. And then the kicker is this. As they come back to that area, of course, you're looking for a rejection of lower price with lighter volume. And what you're also looking for is that, let's say, when it was higher, you're looking for volume at that high because it's showing two different things. It's showing that there's no sellers on the way back down at the strength because you can got to remember something. At that strength, when, when institutions come in marketplaces, right, they don't come in once, folks, okay? They come in five, six, seven, over and over again in order to accumulate the shares that they want. So what ends up happening is that, let's say, just, you know, we all just had a fund. Bottom line, we come in the first place. That'd be a sign of strength. We, you know, it's gonna take us a month and a half to get the position we want, because most times, I'm not talking about trading, I'm talking about purely investing that a fund manager 
thinks that, you know, listen, a year, year and a half from now, they think they have something. So they will come in at those levels. And what you like to see is at the high, before it pulls back, you want to see volume there because what happens there is that equities love to go back to high volume highs. That's just how it basically shakes out. Let's go into the Dow Industrials and take a look at the strength versus the weakness in, inside the Dow Industrials today. Okay, so, uh, and uh, there we go. Okay, point-wise, this is, uh, you know, it's a wild. I remember when they put Cisco in the Dow Industrials. Uh, Cisco uh, is putting 18 positive points. You got Caterpillar putting eight. Uh, Boeing's putting eight. Visa's putting seven. Take it away from it. Uh, Walgreens boots down, uh, putting minus 17. 3M minus nine. JP Morgan, eight. Verizon, seven. Let's go over to Deer, because I was listening to... Uh, fast markets out here, and I think Deer's coming out with their numbers either today or tomorrow. 819. That's going to be tomorrow before the market. Okay, so Deer and Company used to be John Deere, and now it's Deer and Company. The lows 283, the highs 446. You're trading 369. Okay, so let's put this on a weekly. Oh, here's, here's a classic, too. Here, look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about, coming back to strength. So, you see the strength? That, this is on a weekly now. Uh, the first week of January, January 8th. See the, the amount of volume there? That's 11.4 million. We came back with 7.8. That's what you'd like to see, man. You're coming back to strength. And when you, when you do this, folks, okay, the bottom line, you can see the top of that range was $300.55. $300 it got below it, but then you can see at the close, see at the close, it closed, this is for a week. It got below it. It got to $283.31. No, but yet, at the end of the week, it was above the high. That's a test of the high with light of volume and a rejection of price. Then what ends up happening, you're looking for the sign of strength. Now, you can see this one here at its high, to me, does not have a sign of strength. This is actually a sell-off. The last time that it had any volume on it was at a price point of 405. So when I look at this, this is telling me that what Deere is going to say tomorrow morning is that they're not doing as well as the market thinks it might, because you're, you're going right into that downdraft that was created out there in the week of May 20th. That's when Deere went from 386 to 307, explosive volume, 15.7 million. That bottom set, that set, that's testing it, that's saying to me that more than likely what you're gonna see is it's gonna swing into a consolidation. That's how most of those actually work out. It's not a bad looking shot. The reason it's not a bad looking shot is that it did reject lower price. What you'll have I suspect is this. It'll come back down, try to test it out again. This is the supply line. The supply line, this downdraft right here, that's a seller. That's how, that's how that normally comes out. Um, you know, the bottom line is that they were pushing some paper out and they were pushing it out in a large way. So that supply line going sideways is gonna take quite a bit in order to get through. We gotta take a look at, uh, here's, here's one that uh, is gonna get kind of interesting. This is kind of a blast from the past. Um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, they're gonna come out with their numbers at the end of this month. The low is $12, the high is 1776. This is one of the spin-offs. Now, this, this part of Hewlett Packard, when the spin-off, this has the cloud, this has application development, testing, you know, data centers. So when you look at this, you know, it's had a decent run, okay? Um, yesterday, you can see they're buying this thing, man. I always like to see an expansion of volume, and you, you know, you're going to swing with the expansion of volume. Now, it's gonna take some juice to get through this line. And you know what you can do here, just let this play out, meaning don't buy it just yet, but keep this on your radar because what, what, what is happening, you can see that we get a sign of strength here on the 12th of August. You get another one here yesterday. Um, it hasn't moved them out just yet, okay? But that's predictable because of the fact when you put this up, what you're gonna see, you're coming right into 
basically, you know, a very large supply line. That's a large supply line. So that will have to build cars for a bit. But this baby look, it does look to me that you're going to try to, you know, get up into this area of uh, 1742. It's not, it's not a big move, but a couple bucks. That's how, that's how that's set up right now. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow. Dow Industrial is right now up 33. NASDAQ up 58. S&P's up 16. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We get the gold, uh, 1774. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 38. Nasdaq's up 58. S&P's up 15 and a half. Let's go take a look at the oil market. We have a tiger that's growling and prowling on the road right now on the expressway. We're going gonna to look at the XLE, but first we're going to look at the oil market. So, Oil going to pop out here today. When you see this pop, folks, okay, um, my takes oil is going lower. If we put this up, what you're going to see here, it's been a one-way route on the way down here, you know, pretty dramatic. You know, this contract just went from um, $118 three months ago to $90. And you can see that now, you got to remember something, that the oil contract, folks, is a monthly contract that rolls month to month, okay, inside the futures market. But you can quite clearly see you going up today, but look at that volume. It's 6,500. You're coming into 335,000. Now, the roll is on. That's what's also going on. This is the active contract, but the bottom line is that this should have a lot more volume. And what is not done, if we take a look at this, you're going to see this is a clearly defined downtrend in a monster way. You know, it's, it's been down. Now, watch this. We'll put this on a continuous contract. 
Let's see, where are you? Yeah, there it is right there. And you're gonna kinda see what's sticking out like a sore thumb here. The, the amazing part today is that this is up and the dollar is up so dramatically. There's some real divergence out here today. So when we put this on a weekly, what you're gonna see on the weekly is that the bottom line is that you're in no man's land. What I, what I call no man's land is this. When you're, well, look at that. That's interesting, actually. Hold it. That hit. That hit 85.73. Mm. So this is interesting, man. Uh, what it's done is this. And that would make sense. Okay, that would make sense that, you know, it came down straight down. You have got to the highs of October. And, you know, bottom line, thus far, it's rejecting that. I suspect we're going to plow through this. And what you're going to see with the oil contract, it's going to go into the next range. The next range, the bottom of the range is 62. The top of the range out here is this 85. That's what I suspect we're going to have. Now, let's go over to the XLE. That's what the Tiger wanted to look at. Bottom line, we take a look at the XLE. Uh, you know, it's higher today, up $1.93. You're taking a swing point out, but you can see you're not taking a swing out with volume. The, the swing has $30 million, You're at 19. You're also coming into... 57. That's on the weekly. So that's not a setup that I like. If we take a look at this on the weekly basis, what you're going to see on the weekly basis is that you are coming into a monster when we talk about a supply line. You know, you got, you can see that number one, that this is, this is the biggest part. The biggest part of this chart, folks, okay, has to do with that high, the high of the XLE on a weekly basis only has 126 million shares. And then what does it do? It comes off that high with 244 million. When you come off a high, and you come off a high with expanded volume, most times what you end up happening is that you are gonna have a much larger correction than normal. And I suspect that's exactly how and what we're gonna do. You know, that's, that's the bottom line, you know, so. You know, that's, that's telling me, in the mind blower, of course, today is that you have the dollar up so dramatically, but yet the oil contract is still running higher and the gold contract is not down. Okay, well, it's down $2. So let's go to the GDX because what we've been talking about is that, you know, we don't have buyers. And we particularly... In this particular case, now, now check this out. So if you're in the GDX or in the metal market, okay, this is really cool um, in the aspect of what we have today. And this is what it is. When the market came down yesterday and the gold contracts it came down, you can see this GDX. See the GDX? We had 29 million shares traded. Now the 29 million, granted, was going against 29 million. Let me put this, sign, this up here so you can kind of see how this shakes out. Okay, you can see the highs, well, this is actually, with the one that actually went into, I had more than that, was 32 million, okay? So, it was 29 million to 32. Now look what it did. This is what you need for higher price, folks, okay? So what we did, we got down to $25.05 today. We're trading at 25.86, which is over the, high, the low of yesterday. That's what it takes when you have an equity that goes south, has an expansion of volume, you need a test on that. Now, what's really cool about this, and you've heard me say this before, even with the expansion of volume, this did not make it down to the swing point of 25.29. Bottom line, meaning yesterday. We made it to 25.05 today. That's what, that was what the test is all about. So that there, is basically a decent setup. You know, the real, the real kicker inside of that is that I would still wait if you're getting into the GDX for a sign of strength. Because when you put the GDX together with what this dollar is doing, you know, I know the market's not corresponding to it, but the bottom line is that you don't want to be stepping in uh, when the dollar is as high as it is right now. Let's go take a look at the XAU and the HUI and see how these babies are set up. So the XAU right now, uh, this is gonna be cool. It's gonna, it's gonna have done just almost the same thing. But watch, we didn't get underneath it, which is not cool. So the low of yesterday was 105.60. 
We made 105.87. Let me see if the gold bugs index did. You, you want them, you definitely want the gold market to test them, particularly in the type of gold market that we've had lately, meaning we know we don't have buyers. Okay, so the low yesterday in the gold, in the gold bugs index was 203.57. This is great, man. And the X and the HUI did test it. The, the HUI today went to 203.45. Now, one of the let me, actually let me put this in. One of the main reasons that it's really cool that the gold bugs index did it is that the gold bugs it, gold bugs index has a better correlation to the price of gold. You know, when the gold bugs index is basically either coming down or going up, that is the, the first one that you, you really want to take a look at because what ends up happening, it's, the, the, it's a much better correlation to that gold market. Let's go take a look at the silver market out here. We know silver is much more volatile than gold. Out here today, what we have is that silver is backing down with 44,000 contracts. Now, this is definitely backing down into strength. So, whoops, there we go. So, what we have here is this. You get 44,000 contracts. Look at this, man. This is pretty cool, actually. Well, it, it's cool in the context, folks, that it's backing down with light volume. It's not cool in the context that we still don't have any buyers. And in the Silver's case, though, now, this, this is cool. In Silver's case, you can see we have 44,000 contracts today. It's going into 61,000 contracts as well as 86,000 contracts. So this game out here inside of the metals market, uh, particularly um, is we need buyers. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I, I forgot whether I brought this up or not, but uh, the bottom line, it's gonna be really intriguing to see uh, just, you know, the, the traders from uh, JP Morgan, you know, for the whole spoof and the whole bit ball of wax, man, they got guilty. So it's gonna be interesting to see what, time, what type of time they get in the can. The amazing part, is that it was going on so long. It's just incredible. And of course, inside of the metals market, you know, it was like common knowledge, meaning that, you know, JP Morgan has been basically screwing that market, you know, forever. <laughs> and it's like, you know, if you read the story, man, if you, you know, I'm not talking about the story, I'm talking about the court, you know, what happened in court. It's like, they, they had this proof like seven or eight years before they even, Took them down. It's like crazy. Dow. Dow industrials are up uh, 63. Nasdaq's up 61. S&P's up 18. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 56. You get the NASDAQ up 53. S&Ps are up 16 and a half. Check this out, man. This is pretty uh, wild survey. Now, this is PWC, okay, Price Waterhouse, which is a huge, you know, one of the... I think they, you know, I, when I was a kid, I remember, I think they used to have the big 10. Now, now I think there's only three big accounting firms that, you know, um, that public companies have to basically use. Uh, but they did a survey, so check this out. They polled 700 executives and board members of public companies. Half of those uh, are gonna reduce the headcount, uh, plan to, 52% of them have implemented hiring fuses, freezes, and more than four in 10, so 40% of them are basically rescinding job offers. That's a pretty heavy deal, man. You know, that's, that's, that's a big number. That is a don't, totally a big number. And as that's going on, you know, you have the Fed governors out here. They're, the Fed governors are in a whole different trip, man, right now. They are yapping out here like in an incredible way. Um, what we had out here today, so you got James Bullard uh, is urging another 75 basis points hike in September. You got Esther George, who's uh, more, uh, I'd say, dovish at this particular point. Uh, and what's intriguing about this is that, you know, Bullard, was always one of the real doves uh, inside of the marketplace. Now, he's a hawk beyond belief. And what had happened at the bottom is that Esther George was, was a you know, hawk, and now she's, you know, basically, you know, saying that, hey, she thinks she should back off. So in the last meeting, let me get this in the last meeting, because in the last meeting, um, they're, they're both voters this year. That's the bottom line. And in the last meeting, let's see, in July, the Fed in July raised the target rate, you know, by three quarters of a percent. It's followed a similar move in June. Officials have signaled either 50 or 75 basis points on the table for September. Um, both Bullard and George are voters this year. Uh, but George, who hosts the Fed annual policy retreat next week in Jackson Hole, has sounded more dovish than bullish in recent months. Uh, after many years of being viewed as the hawk. So you get Jackson Hole next week. And Jackson Hole, folks, okay, bottom line is that, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of pushing and shoving uh, in Jackson Hole as to bottom line where this whole thing's going to go. And the key, one of the keys, man, when all these Fed governors get together is watch the currency markets. Because the currency markets, you know, they, they don't have control of the currency markets, but they can move those markets around. And we're talking currencies, you know, bottom line, like, I mean, you look at this thing. The euro is par. So get ready to go to your mafia coast, folks, because the bottom line is that even if you go there four or five years from now, man, trust me, go there, go see it. And, and th listen, there's a lot of other beautiful places in, in Italy, I'm sure there is, but a mafia coast is one of them. And the way this is trading out right now, this looks to me, it's going to go back and test the, the 0.99. And it'll be amazing if this thing, you know, blows through the 0.99. But that's how it's set up right now. If we go to the yen, we take a look at the yen. 
where the yen is right now, the yen's trading is 135. So, yeah, look at this, man. Same deal, man. The yen's getting weaker again. The yen wants to go back to the, look at this. So no, the yen didn't break. Yeah, the, the yen, the yen, here, let me put this up. I'm gonna actually put this up on a, I'm gonna put this up on a two year weekly. I wanna see what, oh, that's just a straight, wow, look at this, man. That was just a rocket ship, man. The, the yen's amazing. The yen was, I mean, this went straight up from, this has been going straight up since uh, March. 114, now this is weakness, okay? 114 straight up to 139, pulls back to 130, and then bottom line, um, looks like it's gonna go back to the highs again. So the real kicker is that, you know, what is this dollar gonna do to the market? You know, the consistency thus far has been higher dollar, lower market, you know, we'll see where it shakes out. We gotta take a look at, let's go take a look at the uh, Amazon out here. We have Amazon right now trading sideways. This is kind of dangerous, actually. Yeah, this is kind of dangerous. You know, and, but what does happen is this. See all, see all these gaps? When you have th th this last gap, it was a very bullish gap because that is, this is like a classic island bottom, but you don't see island bottoms like this, man. You got, so the way technically it works, the longer or the bigger that the island bottom is, the more probability, number one, that the stock's gonna be amazing on the way up. And in this particular case, you can see, you're talking about an island bottom from April 29th going all the way over, look at that, to July 29th. That is pretty cool. Now, that being said, you can see that, let me pull this back, I'm gonna put this on a couple of years now. Yeah, well, that's where it's, it's, this is a classic. This is at ice. Look at this. You can see why. Now, when you get into supply lines, folks, see that supply line? That is a monster supply line. That's a big supply line. And the supply line, the supply line started, let's see, July of 2020, all the way over to April of 2022. So you have approximately, you know, almost a year and a half, year and three quarters of a supply line that people are in a losing position because they are bought above that position. Now, you can make the case, you know, and I'll make the case actually, that being in Amazon, if you're in for a longer period of time and you're above that, those People aren't going to be as worried. <laughs> it just, I, I suspect they're not because the bottom line is that, you know, if you use Amazon at all, it's really still hard to figure out how they can do what they do and get the service that they, they give on a consistent basis. Qualcomm, let's go take a look at Qualcomm. We've got a couple of tigers looking at Qualcomm out here. Uh, Qualcomm right now, let's see what we have. It's up 327. Put this on a weekly. Uh, yeah, I like the setup. See, the, uh, on a long-term deal, right? The, so look at this. These are always sweet, you know, as long as you have patience on a long-term deal. You can see that, you know, six weeks ago, we broke the downtrend. And, you know, the, the high there is trading out at, uh, oh, I like that too. But that 192, man. This is, you know, this is impressive, man. You know, now... When you do something that this is long though, the bottom line, it's gonna take a lot longer to get up to those highs. That's how it works. But if you're building a portfolio, that's a nice way to build a portfolio when you actually see that it actually did break the downtrend. Um, and you know, you still got some nice volume up there. I tested it, but it, this has good volume up at 188. And you're at 151 right now. And that's technically, fundamentally what's happening is that they're basically plotting a return to the surfer market with a new chip, you know. And, and if you know anything about Qualcomm, the bottom line, it's a royalty type of business. And, you know, they, they'll make the chip, the bottom line, then they'll sell the designs to the chip. They get royalties on all of them. I mean, there's nothing like the royalty business, folks. Dow, Dow Industrials right now up 25. You get the NASDAQ up 33. S&P's up 12. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up uh, one. You got the Nasdaq up 23. S&Ps are up eight and a half. Markets having a hard time holding price, folks. So what you're going to have here, of course, is that you're going to have a market that bottom line didn't test the lows of yesterday and couldn't hold price. You know, so if we take a look at the SPY again, what you're gonna see, the SPY got to 428.61. You're, you're only a buck below that. The kicker here though, and this is what you wanna watch, down yesterday with 63, you're up on 38, let's say we do 40, and it can't hold the highs. It, you know, if this thing wanted to basically get up into the highs of yesterday, uh, it should have been able to hold these highs. That's on your SPY. We take a look at the NDX 100. Same type of setup inside the NDX. Bottom line is that uh, yesterday uh, you came down and we got a low out there with uh, 47 million. You're at 34, probably do about 35, 36. Same type of setup, man. Bottom line, can't hold price. We had the high out here of, uh, today of uh, 330.49. You're, you know, buck off that. Um, that's not a lot. That's not a lot, but what it is, intraday if you're a bull what ends up happening and you're trying to push prices higher um you want to see them stay higher particularly if you have light volume and we just it's just not there and we go back to king dollar because this king dollar man overnight this is going to be a trip uh watching the markets trade overnight tonight i mean this is this is this is a this is a wide price spread again man i mean the bottom line you had 1055 yep yeah, it almost went up a full penny so a thousand ticks is a penny. This is, you know, went up 945 ticks. 
You know, it's a big number, man. It's, and I suspect it's going to go right after the highs again, and we'll see how that shakes out. If it ever blows away these highs, man, oh, man, there'll be something else uh, as to what we can buy around the world. It, it might, it might be start, uh, you might want to start looking for real estate around the world, someplace that you want to groove in for a while, because um, the correlation is pretty intense. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health happens in prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 o'clock in the morning. Great show, folks. Look at him, folks.